this is the story of a man named Markiplier. He yelled and screamed a lot of things, and was paid for recording that and putting it online. People enjoyed this, and Markiplier was happy. However, one day, after recording his noise for over 17 hours, he decided that he would go outside. And with that decision, something peculiar happened. Something that Markiplier would not seem to forget. When Markiplier came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. In an act of defiance, Margaret Plyer went through the right door, even though the narrator explicitly told him not to. In the strange little room that Margaret Plyer found, there was a broom. Margaret Plyer decided that he would interact with the broom by left-clicking on it. No, I'm sorry, it, it was right-click. Maybe if you press Q? Ooh, ooh, try the E key. Uh, I'm all out of ideas. Uh, I apologize. Please walk out of this closet and resume the story. Markiplier exited the closet, pretending that nothing had happened. Markiplier ignored the wolf stash on the floor and kept walking. When Markiplier came to a set of stairs, he went up. Now Markiplier, pay close attention. There's a real decision to be made. Once you choose your path, there is no going back, and I won't hint at which is the correct way. Let's see what this choice says about you. Markiplier chose left. The narrator told him to go left on the very first decision, the decision that he could have made correctly. He was too scared to believe that the narrator could actually help him. After all, the narrator was just a voice in his head. Alas, as he lifted the veil of blindness from the top of his head, he saw the world from a new perspective. You see, I was your friend all along. If only you had listened to me. But it is never too late to make the correct decision. And now, that is exactly what you have done. Markiplier came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. In an act of defiance, Markiplier went through the right door, even though the narrator explicitly told him not to. Markiplier ignored the wolf stash on the floor and kept walking. When Markiplier came to a set of stairs, he went up. Markiplier decided that he would ignore the narrator once more, and so he went downstairs. In turn, the narrator decided that he would lock Markiplier in a room with a nurse mannequin. Now, on the bright side, there's some horrible disco music in the background that you can dance to to try to ease the pain. <laughs> Markiplier came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. For some reason, Markiplier was listening to the narrator. Markiplier, I am so sorry that you have to keep walking down these endless halls. I haven't even written anything because you were never supposed to be here. I didn't expect you to actually listen to me. I thought you would have gone through the right door. That's where the story is. Well, I have to figure out something. I have to keep wandering down these halls forever. Alright, I've got it. At the end of this hall, there is a door. Yes! Yes, and that door leads to a room. Oh, this is coming along perfectly. And in that room, there is a table. Oh, yes. Beautiful table. A marvelous table. Alright, Markiplier. Let's head over to that room, shall we? That's definitely strange. There's supposed to be a table here, not a crate. Uh, well, do what you wish.